Welcome back to Blau Dev. Today we're going to be going over how to store variables locally on your app using the shared preferences library. So what this is going to allow us to do is we can save strings, integers, doubles, and booleans locally on a device using the shared preferences library and it will handle all the local storage settings for both iOS and Android. So we can store things such as usernames, we can store things such as counters, we can store things such as um, booleans signifying if someone's been to a certain spot of the app before. We can store all of these things locally within the app and so there's no need to connect to a database to get that variable. And so there's a lot of applications for how you can use this. Today I'm going to show you a very simple one just to show you how to implement it within the app that we've been working on. So what we're first going to do is we're going to go to the shared preferences library in pub.dev and we are going to copy the shared preferences dependency, go to our project, pubspec.yaml, go under dependencies, and then we're going to add it in. Run pub get and close out of that. And then next, we want to make sure that we add or import uh, this package to every single screen that's going to utilize this. In this example, I'm going to import it to the opening screen and the login screen. And if you don't remember what screens those are, pull up in the simulator here, that would be this opening screen. And then when I push the login button, uh, the login screen that follows. And so these are the two screens that we want to utilize it for. And what we want to do is we're going to display a little uh, welcome back message um, and then print out the name of the user. Um, and we're going to store the name of that user uh, after they log in. So if they haven't logged in before, it's just going to say welcome. And if they have logged in before, it's going to say welcome back so and so. And so let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to check if the variable has been set locally yet. And so on this opening screen, we're actually going to implement the uh, init state, so we just want to say override init state. Okay, and then I'm actually going to call a method called get data. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to remove the super init state. And then I'm going to create a method called get data. And this is going to be asynchronous. Now, the reason I do this, and the reason I don't just call the local variable within the init state itself is because we need to uh, shared preferences the library we're using it's an asynchronous function call and so we cannot call it within init state because you cannot make init state asynchronous um, that's just not how it works so we can reference another method which can be asynchronous and then here is where we're going to call our shared preferences so the first thing you need to do is you need to say shared preferences and then give it a name. I'm gonna call mine prefs equals await shared preferences dot get instance. Okay, now we have our instance of shared preferences. The next thing we wanna do is we want to, I'm gonna say set state and actually in front of all this, I forgot to do one thing is establish a string called display name. Okay. And I'm going to say display name is equal, and this is in set state because we want to change the state of this variable. And this way, once this is called, it'll update the screen. Um, so we have display name is going to be equal to prefs, which is our shared preferences instance. Um, and then we say dot get string. And I'm going to pause right here really quickly. Uh, you can see here that you can store several different things um, in shared preferences. We can do booleans, we can do doubles, we can do ints, um, we can do keys, uh, strings, and then string lists. So there's a bunch of different data types, but it is important to know, we're going to use string, but it is important to know that you should not be using um, shared preferences in your local storage to store important key information for a user. Ideally, you should be using a database like Firestore or something else um, and storing critical information in that database. Shared preferences is meant for small, um, simple, uh, 
variables. It's not meant to be crazy amounts of data. It's meant for simple um, variables that can be referenced to achieve certain um, purposes. Um, okay, so we're going to say display name equals press get string, and we're going to have the string be called display name. That's the variable we're going to be setting. And so right now, this is going to be set to null because we do not have a display name string set in shared preferences yet. It's, we haven't done anything to do that. Um, but I wanted to set this up first um, before we go ahead into the next bit. So the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to set display name. And the place where we want to do that is right on this screen. So I go to my login screen. Let's see, where do I submit? Email field, password field. I think, yes, right here. Okay, uh, this looks kind of messy actually. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Oh no, I can't do that. That's my bad. Um, yeah, that's just gonna have to be fine. Um, okay, so inside this if statement, we have if user is not equal to null. So if this if statement gets triggered, that means the user has signed in successfully. And then you can see here, currently what we do is we navigate them into the app should they um, be successful with their login. Before we do this, however, we're gonna implement shared preferences and we're gonna set the display name variable. And so what we're gonna do is similar to on the uh, opening screen, we're gonna say shared preferences, prefs equals wait shared preferences dot get instance and then we're going to say prefs dot set and you can see here again we can set bools doubles and string string lists we're going to be setting a string the string is going to be called display name and the value is going to be user dot display name okay and so what this will do and Okay, we'll come back to that. But what this is gonna do is anytime a user successfully logs in, it's going to set that user's current display name to that local variable. And then we're gonna navigate into the app. Okay, so that's simple. Now we're gonna go back to opening screen. I'm gonna rebuild this. Okay, and we are going to add our little text field that has our welcome message here. So let's add a, we're gonna add a padding just like this one, but instead of buttons, um, let's call this display. And what display is gonna be is we're gonna say if display name is not equal to null, We are going to say return uh, text, and the text is going to say welcome back, and then the display name. Okay, and then other actually since these are one-liners, we don't even need this. Okay, and then we're going to say else return text welcome. Okay, the last thing we need here is some styling. So we're gonna say style, text, style, color, colors.white, size, um, we're gonna do 25 is fine. Okay. Actually, let's do that. and then paste the same styling into our else statement, reformat our code. Okay. So let's use an example for this guy. So test, when I rerun the app after having logged in, tests at gmail.com's display name was test. Um, but if we create a new user, let's say, We'll just call him Phil. Phil at Gmail. Give him a password. Okay. 
Log it in. Rerun it. Welcome back, Phil. Awesome. It's exactly what we wanted. Now, we could make this a little bit better and we could also add that setter. So this little bit right here, um, we could add that to our register screen as well. That way the user doesn't have to log in another time in order to see it say, welcome back so-and-so. It'll just say it, you know, starting from the first time. So we can add that in as well. Um, I'm gonna leave this as is. Again, it's really simple. The key thing you wanna remember is after you've imported it, I'll go back up here. So after you've imported it to the file you wanna use it in, all you do is instantiate a shared preferences object, and then you call prefs, or whatever you called the object, dot either set string bool int, etc., or get string bool int, etc. Excuse me. So that's it, really simple. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Leave a comment below. If you have any other use cases that you're curious as to whether or not it's a good idea to use shared preferences for, let me know and I'd be happy to help. Um, and I'll catch you guys next time.